we we think the biggest regulatory changes are, are going to happen because SEC Chairman uh, Gensler is going. He's announced he's re, he's leaving uh, on January twentieth. Uh, so the the digital asset world we think is now about to take off and, and thrive. In this interview on ARK Invest with Kathy Wood, we explore three transformative topics, how deregulation and government efficiency can catalyze innovation, the emerging multiomics revolution reshaping healthcare, and the seismic impact of Bitcoin surge beyond $98,000 in today's crypto markets. Bitcoin is finally trading at 98,000 with recent market changes as institutional adoption accelerates and regulatory clarity improves. Stay tuned as Kathy Wood provides invaluable insights on how these breakthroughs will influence global growth, healthcare advancements, and the future of digital assets. Before we begin, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video to stay updated on our latest content and breaking crypto news. ...of that, um, because you know, large companies have not felt any pressure, competitive or otherwise, because of the regular, uh, regulatory stance of Lena Khan and others out there uh, to uh, investigate new technologies, actually by companies um, and establish a, a, a price. These are strategic buys and they telegraph to the world how much innovation is worth from a strategic point of view. Uh, well, we haven't seen a lot of that. There's been a dearth of it, and we think that's going to change. So we're going to have a lot of price discovery. Uh, and we know also that uh, at the Department of Justice, um, uh, President Trump is bringing in people who are uh, very pro-competition, uh, and they are looking at uh, sort of quasi-monopolies out there as, as being not so healthy uh, for uh, growth in the U.S. and, and global economy. Uh, so I think we're going to see uh, a lot of freeing up and a lot of M&A. There's pent-up demand for it. Then we've got uh, Health and Human Services, and I did talk about this uh, the last time, this concept, the, the three planks that the, the new, I will call them health czars, uh, are are going to follow, uh, so they say, you know, uh, rooting out uh, corruption. There are lots of payments in the healthcare ecosystem uh, that uh, that that should not, they're misplaced, mistaken, um, and uh, and should not be made. So uh, they're certainly going to go after that. I think from our point of view, the the two other planks are even more important. One is bringing uh, science-based um, evidence into healthcare decision-making and into healthcare, uh, well, drug discovery. Uh, so we, that is definitely plays into what we are calling the multiomics revolution uh, and will help speed it up. And then the other one is moving away from this focus on, you know, treating chronic diseases into um, into a period where encouraging wellness and curing disease uh, become uh, the 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 primary ways of controlling chronic disease. So again, this is the multi omics uh, revolution. And uh, we're very excited about it. We'll see a lot of price discovery now that large cap pharma and biotech uh, feel more free to make acquisitions in these areas because they really need the expertise that has evolved uh, as the multiomics revolution has been taking off. And now they'll have the freedom from a regulatory point of view to do more of it. Uh, the last thing I'll say on fiscal policy before heading into the charts and going into the rest of it is there is a lot of concern and we receive we have received the question about um, deficits and and government spending and the role 
that they play in inflation. And uh, one of the things I'd like to illustrate with the charts uh, is that deficits or government spending uh, has, to be, has to be funded, that monetary policy uh, has to accommodate government spending, uh, or if it does not, then government spending crowds out the private sector. So I think a lot of this inflation uh, risk concern um, needs to incorporate this uh, idea that monetary policy is very important um, as to whether government spending and deficits result in inflation. And if monetary policy is willy nilly and just is accommodating everything, uh, then yes, inflation will be a likely outcome. Uh, but if monetary policy is not supporting government spending and is restrictive, as Jay Powell, we think, correctly identifies it uh, or describes it now, then what happens is government spending really crowds out the private sector. As discussed by Kathy Wood, let's explore how deregulation and streamlined government operations set the stage for rapid innovation across key sectors. Then dive into the multiomics revolution in healthcare, where advanced genomic and data-driven approaches promise to shift healthcare from chronic treatment to proactive wellness. Finally, we'll examine Bitcoin's historic climb past $98,000, highlighting why digital assets are redefining global finance and portfolio strategy. Uh, I think when, when we throw out there our growth expectations for the globe, uh, and I'll get into this in a little bit, and, you know, many people, when we throw out a number, they're thinking about life as we know it now. Uh, and, and to many, that's kind of the physical world on earth. But we're moving more and more into the digital world, uh, we think, in many categories, consumption in the digital world will be higher than consumption in the physical world. And uh, the other uh, increment to growth, and again, that people cannot imagine now, um, is this new world, the universe, uh, certainly the moon and, and Mars and, and beyond. Uh, so I think, I think that is what this new age is going to unleash is, you know, opening up many more minds to the opportunities and, you know, giving us uh, the privilege and opportunity to do the kind of analysis we do to help people understand, you know, how their lives are going to change and how important it is, it will be to be on the right side of change because these opportunities are enormous. So thank you, Sam. This is one of the biggest uh, opportunities out there, certainly early stage, uh, but we'll be here before we know it. And we'll be here before most people thought even five years ago. Um, Absolutely. 20 in two years, we we're, we all know about Elon's, uh, Elon's timing here. He's uh, very optimistic, but uh, for a reason, um, when he sets out a goal like that in two years, who is he communicating to? It's not just to, you know, those of us who are who are uh, reading about breakthroughs. It is to his employee base and importantly, supplier base and the government uh, sector, including regulators. So it's, it's a big message and maybe it's not two years, even though I think he truly believes it is two years and feels like he's now in a situation to make that a reality with fewer regulatory roadblocks. Um, but it is much sooner, I think, than anyone thought, maybe even two years ago. All right, so now we will go into uh, the balance, uh, the usual drill on Employment Friday. <clears throat> And so starting with fiscal policy and with the election, you know, before this moment in time, I was talking about, OK, gridlock uh, there. Nothing's going to happen uh, now with the results of the election. Um, we can see a lot of changes and 
I think the biggest one, uh, and what we just illustrated with uh, nuclear power, is regulations, getting regulations out of the way. Um, uh, we, we obviously need regulations uh, for the safety and well-being uh, of individuals and, and so forth, and absolutely agree with that. But uh, the regulatory environment is a morass now. I mean, when you put people in positions as regulators and they start building their empires, you get more and more regulations. And it's, it's really had a stranglehold on, on businesses, especially small and medium businesses. So we think those shackles are going to come off. Um, despite this very close correlation, a high correlation between this measure of metals to gold and interest rates, since the 0809 uh, crisis, we've seen a, a breakdown of the relationship recently. Um, and uh, we think it will re-engage uh, and, and the truth will be somewhere in between. We'll need to see some cyclical dynamic here. And as I mentioned, it's important uh, that the president and his team make very clear you know, what the, when these incentives, tax cuts, uh, regulations coming down and others are going to kick in uh, because uh, if they are, if they're not going to kick in anytime soon, we could see a lot more cyclical weakness, but if they're going to be retroactive and will kick in rapidly, okay, now, now, now we're talking. And we think if that's true, this purple line will start going up the combination of Metals prices going up, maybe the gold price going down because gold price going up has been a flight to safety in a very uncertain period. And um, maybe we'll get uh, interest rates down a little bit more. But if we go back to uh, the long term history of interest rates here, um, you'll see that the, the, the decline, the secular decline was from very high levels and um, was a very good thing uh, until it wasn't because uh, here at 2020 and 2020, uh, what the long-term interest rate was, um, was discounting was the possibility of an outright global def depression, a deflationary bust associated with COVID. That would not have been good. And so where, where will equilibrium in this new world be? Uh, well, if we're right and real go growth goes up dramatically, um, say to that six to 8% range, but inflation keeps coming down, uh, we could be back to an environment where long rates will be um, on, in a consistent way lower than short rates. Short rates might go up to that six to 8% range, but long rates, looking at the deflationary ramifications of innovation, um, long rates uh, could be much lower as they were during the 50 year period uh, uh, that ended in the roaring 20s. To watch the full interview, check the link in the description. Kathy Wood envisions a world where deregulation accelerates technological adoption, multiomics, unleashes unprecedented medical breakthroughs, and Bitcoin transforms into a pillar of modern finance. We'd love your thoughts. On some questions, how might reduced regulatory burdens alter the competitive landscape of global innovation? In what ways could the rise of multiomics and digital assets reshape investment strategies over the next decade? If you found this content valuable, please like, comment, and subscribe. Your support helps us bring you expert insights from industry pioneers. Stay tuned for more interviews that keep you at the forefront of disruptive innovation and crypto evolution.